The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and open of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all of those who mourn, console all those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may call the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3. It's amazing to me that I'm sitting here in beautiful Florida and reading this scripture to you all. And six years ago, well, five years ago, I was going to hell. But God came into my life five years ago. It will be five years um, in May, of two, uh, May 24th of this month that I publicly announced to the world, to social media, to you all, that I have given my life to Christ. But what happened? What happened to that point that changed everything in my life? What was that? Well, I want to share my quick testimony with you all. You know, I grew up in a Christian household. Well, it had Christian values. Uh, went to church, but I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Just like we live in a Christian nation, United States of America, but we're, everybody's not Christian. I didn't have that personal relationship with Jesus. So when I turned 18 after graduating high school, I went to college and uh, went off and did everything that college people do. I mean, you go you go to class and everything, but after class on the weekends, what you do? You go party, you drink, uh, you do other things that I would not mention, but you all know what I'm talking about. And I was indulging in those things. I, uh, and that consoled me and that basically uh, took over my life and I was really taking college seriously and I dropped out of college a couple years uh, from that and ended up going back to school but during that time I was empty all those years you know I gave my life to Christ at 26 I get to that moment but all my 20s from 18 to 26 I was empty it might, it might seem like I wasn't but deep down inside I was empty I was doing those things just to try to bring comfort into my heart, but not knowing that I wasn't, it wasn't bringing fulfillment to me. So what happened? I remember moving to Orlando, Florida in October 2014. Then six months in, I was getting my master's degree. And six months in, get my master's degree at Full Sail University. Uh, that end, from six months from October, that ended up to be April 2015, where I was always going downtown partying, drinking, and things like that, and none of that was bringing fulfillment. I, I had a void in my heart. I felt empty. After I did all that, I, I felt empty. I said, listen, it has to be more, something more than what I'm doing, but I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know who to ask, and what happened? One night, when I, I remember going downtown Orlando, and I said to myself, I'm like, you know, maybe it's just emotion, maybe it's just my feelings. And I'm feeling this certain certain type of way. I'm just go back downtown Orlando and just grab a couple of drinks, chill out, and maybe this emotion that I'm having will pass over. Uh, so that's why I thought, you know. So I went down to Orlando, downtown Orlando, to grab a, a drink. So in the bar area, you know, they shut down the uh, streets down there for like two streets, and you just walk around. And I always go to this one particular bar area. Had a beer in my hand, and I was just sitting there, and I thought to myself, like, you know, something's feel different you know I, I really don't want a beer no more and what happened I put my I threw that beer away and I got in my car and I drove uh, to my apartment in Winter Park Florida it's like one in the morning I parked in a, uh, I drove up to the my parking spot and I sat there and I was thinking to myself I was like man you know I went back to get my undergrad degree and I graduated from that I'm getting my master's degree I have my own apartment I have my money in my bank account I get my master's degree. I'm not hurting for anything. I have my own car. And also, why not, in my heart, like, something is missing. Like, what is going on in my life? And I'm doing everything that this society is telling me to do. Following the quote-unquote American dream. Like, you, once you receive a good job, a good degree, you know, get your wife, get your white picket fence, 
get a dog, have some kids, you know, then that would bring you happiness. But that was a lie. That was a lie from hell. But I didn't know who to turn to. So what happened? As soon as I was thinking on those things, I wasn't verbally saying that. But as soon as I was thinking on those things, I heard an audible voice. And it said, Roderick, give me 100%. I was actually crying when I was thinking of those things in my mind. And I started to cry. And that's why I heard the audible voice of the Lord. It said, Roderick, give me 100%. Jesus. Never heard his audible voice before. But I knew that was him. I knew that was God. Spoke to me in my car and said, Roderick, give me everything. He did not bring me. He didn't say, I, <laughs> I saw you at the bar uh, doing lusting after those women, whatever. He didn't condemn me at all. The love of Christ filled my car five years ago. And five years later, I just read that verse. Now I'm a preacher of the gospel about to move to Zanzibar, Tanzania full time for five years. To preach and tell other people about this man that saved me, this man named Jesus. All because of Jesus, all because of Jesus that I'm here today. It's all about Jesus. Everything I needed was found in Jesus. My peace, my comfort, everything I needed is in Jesus. I'm complete now with, with Jesus. And after that, and that, when he came into my car, it felt that it filled that void in my heart. And that's the same thing that he wants from you. The Bible says in Joel chapter three, verse fourteen, he said, and "The Bible says multitudes and multitudes are in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near, in the valley of decision." And what happened? I was in that valley of decision. I was going to hell. I was a fornicator. I was a liar. I was a idolatry. I mean, a idolatry. I was idolizing women, idolizing sports, idolizing money, idolizing different things. And I was going straight to hell. Full course. But but God saved me. He pulled me out of that miry clay, set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. And if he did it for me, he can certainly do it for you. But you had to make you have to make a decision. Like I just read you that told you that verse. Multitudes of multitudes are the valley of decision. And I was in that valley of decision. And I want you to let you know that I made that decision. And I want you to I want you to make that decision as I'm speaking, because people are going to hell every second. You know, it says in Isaiah chapter five, verse 14, that hell is enlarging itself and that without measure measure. So people are going to hell every day. And it actually so many people are going that hell is actually enlarging herself to fit the people that have reject the free gift. And I was on my way there. But God, he has he had a plan for my life. I'm, my heart is still beating. And the same thing he wants for you. He has a plan for your life. And you but you have to make that decision. Jesus, I wasn't looking for Jesus that night. I wasn't. I didn't wake up and say, hey, man, I'm I'm going to get saved today, y'all. You know, I'm texting my friends like, yeah, I'm going to get saved today. I'm getting my life to Jesus. No, God, I did not find God. God found me. And when people say, yeah, I found God. No, <laughs> you didn't. He found you. He chose you. He chose me. And he chose me to tell you and warn you. That I'm, he chose me to go across the world to preach the gospel. And I'm using this social media platform to tell you the day is the day. Time is running out. The Lord is pleading through me to tell you, make a decision. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put this off. The enemy wants you to put this off to 2021, 2022. You see what's going on in this world today. This is all happening for a reason. Why? Because Jesus is coming back. The king. One king, the Messiah, Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, is coming back soon. And he wants you to be right with him. He wants you to have peace with God. Do you have peace with God? I want to ask you that. Do you have peace with God? If you do not have peace with God, because I didn't have peace with God at one time in my life. But I made a decision, and the Lord loves you. He has a plan for your life. So make that decision right now. If you want to receive a, that free gift, free, it's free. Just like I did oh five years ago. And you see what's going on. You can look at my Instagram. You look at my Facebook. See what the Lord is doing. All glory to him. I don't take credit for any of that. It's all him. I'm, I just thank God he entrusted me what he has given me. And I'm going across the world to preach the gospel real soon. But you have to make a decision now. Because he time is running out. He has a plan for your life. And you can reach people I can't reach. So it's time for you right, right now to make that decision. Give your life to Jesus. If so if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord to save you real fast. Just say this prayer with me. Just say, dear Jesus, I surrender 100 percent on my heart to you. I repent. Forgive me. Jesus, I believe that you're risen from the dead. You're coming back again for me. And 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 I just say again. 
Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. Just say I'm saved, born again, forgiven, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. That, that's what it all takes. I want to say amen, congratulations. That, but that's what it takes. It makes You have to make a decision today, just like I did over five years ago. And I promise you, this is a word from you. Whoever's listening will listen. Make that decision today. You said that prayer and watch what happens. A year from now, people will not notice you. God bless.